Jessica with Gold Rush Expeditions, and today we're in beautiful Colorado exploring this very cool old abandoned mine. The structure of this mere entrance is impeccable. It's very, very rare that you find a mine that is this big, this intact, and has this kind of masonry work. Can you just see the amount of detail and effort that went into building this wall right here? And this continues all the way inside the mine. I want to go explore this mine, but I don't have my safety gear right now, so I'm gonna go get that, come back, and we'll take a look at this mine. Now many of you may say, that's a pretty dang big mine. What mine is that? Well, there is no question what mine this was. It tells me right at the entrance. This is the Roosevelt. A mine like this is not something you find on public land every single day. This is something you would usually find on a patented mining claim that you would pay millions of dollars for. The Roosevelt Mine is very historical and very rich in production in past years. How do I know that? Look at the sheer size of this thing, the sheer construction of it alone. You don't put this kind of money into a mine that isn't producing gold. We have water running directly out of this mine and if you look inside the water coming out, it sparkles, it absolutely sparkles. In fact, I would not mind panning some of the water right here that's rushing out of the mine. This mine is abandoned today because whoever held the claim on it for years and years did not renew it. They did not pay their annual assessments and the claim lapsed. So I'm not quite sure who the old owners were or why they let it lapse, but I will definitely do some research and discover the history behind that. This mine would have not been left because of lack of mineralization. This mine would have been left most likely because of the War Act. It was illegal to mine for anything that wasn't a strategic mineral for the war. Therefore, somebody who had a gold mine, it was illegal for them to work it. So a lot of times, men abandoned their mines, they went to war, they fought for our country, and when they came back, the world was a different place. We didn't have as many miners that were needed because there were a lot of other job opportunities. At Gold Rush Expeditions, we are selling this as a load and a plaster mining claim load so that you can walk right into this tunnel, get the minerals right from the rock itself. Placer, because this mine, as well as many other mines in the area, are washing away with each spring runoff, each winter melt, different heavy metals that are going to flow down into the river below. We don't put a placer claim on everything, because a placer claim on everything doesn't make sense. You have to have a reason for the placer, which in this case is a perfect reason. There are minerals just flowing out of this mine. At Gold Rush Expeditions, we've been doing this for 10 years. We know where a good placer is going to be and a bad placer is going to be. So you won't see placer claims on everything, but this will definitely have one. Okay. When exiting the main portal at the Roosevelt Claim, you come right into a workshop connected right to the main portal. It looks like it was a workshop by all of the construction here. It doesn't go out anywhere else. And I wanted to just point out some very rare construction. So this was built with wood as the main supports, and then stone was mortared all in here to cause even more support for this entire building, which is why this building is still standing today. So I've journeyed away from the Roosevelt portal and down to the processing site of the Roosevelt. This is considered a stamp mill, and it's actually in pretty good shape. Behind me here is what's considered a battery. A battery is an accumulation of five stamps, which are these pieces right here. These are my five stamps. A stamp is responsible for crushing up ore to smaller pieces so that they could extract the gold out. Down here is what did the crushing. So these would all alternate up and down, up and down, and they would crush crush that ore to smaller pieces so that we could extract the gold. This is one battery, which contains five stamps, and behind me here is a second battery. So this would be considered a two battery stamp mill or a 10 stamp mill. The way the stamp mill kept moving was by the use of these cans up above me here. You can see that they're not all perfectly straight. They're not going to spin at the exact same speed. Basically what that is is kind of a gravity force, you know, a object in motion stays in motion. One of those starts going and the counterbalance of the weight causes all of them to start moving, which causes these to go up and down. I have a feeling that this was not originally at this mine, nor was it originally assembled at this mine. It appears it may have been recycled, put together at another mill, 
and then bought or transferred to this site. Reason being is because they're labeled. You don't see this all the time. This one over here says R, and each of the stamps is labeled 1R, 2R, 3R, 4R, and 5R. Once you start going, they start to wear and their bearings get set in a certain direction. So if you transported this from another place and didn't set it up exactly right, then the weighted balance of it is going to be off and it's not going to stamp properly. This entire mill was powered by water. There is a raging river just below us here. And the Myers were ingenuitive enough that they actually caught the water further upstream, ran it through piping all the way to this mill, which turned that wheel, and then the water continued on all the way back to a house down below us that would have produced power. It would have been a powerhouse, all using just the river down below. This claim is available for purchase. And if you would like more pictures, more video, visit our website, www.goldrushexpeditions.com, or give us a call.